Good morning and welcome to the talk series on Guiding Lights by Zago. I'm Payal Gandhi Hoon, your host, bringing you up close for some riveting conversations with some of the brightest HR leaders. Today, I have someone with me who is authentic and a strong advocate for EQ. He believes in addition to a robust business plans and managing costs, a business really thrives on being people focused. His career of close to three decades spans industries ranging from manufacturing, healthcare, consulting, software, en energy infrastructure, fintech, and now edtech. So on that note, I'd like to welcome Rohit Thakur, Chief Human Resources Officer, Lead School, to be the guiding light today. Welcome, Rohit. Thank you so much for having me, Hope. I really appreciate the opportunity to share a few of my thoughts. Fantastic. So, Rohit, let's get rolling then. Uh, you're a successful HR leader, and I'm really curious to know what drives you and uh, what is really your formula for being HR focused? For what drives me, I think I've been working now, like you said, uh, over 27 years. And I think a story that I want to share that really happened, that truly happened to me, I think um, in 2001, when I was at GE and I was talking to, uh, like one of my roles was to incubate companies coming into India. And I was incubating the entire consumer uh, business IT, you know, in Bangalore. And that's when this this story really happened to me. When, when, when the person who was doing the interviews told me about this anecdotal story with Jack Welch. There's something called, uh, no, no, called a, a, a Kentucky Derby, uh, you know, which is a massive uh, horse horse race. And, uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, one horse. Uh, I, I forget the name of the horse, but let's call it uh, Fiery Rock, you know, for, for, for example. Uh, that horse was expected to win. Uh, you know, was the was the favorite horse, and uh, uh, Jack Welch, uh, as was told to me, ha happened to be at the Derby, and uh, he wanted to meet the trainer, you know, of of Fiery Rock, and he went and met the trainer, and he said, "Hey, um, um, I don't know, I don't know the name of the trainer, but let's say John." Uh, he said, "John, do you think Fiery Rock will win today?" And John said, uh, "I'm I'm sure she'll win today," and Jack said, uh, "Do you think he'll break his own record of of speed?" And he said, "I'm." I I'm not sure about that because uh, I know he'll win, but but will he break his own record? It will really depend on the pack that runs with him. Uh, if, the, if the pack you know gives him the challenge, if the pack runs fast, then Fire Rock I think you know will will break his record. But if the pack is slow or the pack doesn't give it that best, then uh, he'll definitely win. You know, but I'm not sure if he'll win the record. As I got this story, I I got two two nuggets you know out of this. One, you know, this was early career. I, I, I had about seven years of experience then, 2001. I said, hey, I'm a follower, right? I'm a follower to a leader. Uh, so a, a lot of what in my career, my leader or my team uh, of peers will achieve will depend on how fast I run. Uh, you know, how, how, how much, uh, how much of, of an effort I give, you know, to whatever I'm doing. Uh, and that's one nugget. The second nugget, you know, that I got is, at a certain point in time, when I become a leader myself, I've got to work with teams, uh, you know, that are are challenging. In that sense, we've got to build the best teams uh, because working with the best team will enable me to give it my best shot. And I think that's been uh, that stayed with me. Uh, the story is 20 years old, but it, like uh, I still remember the office, and I still I can still visualize the entire, you know the entire conversation. And I think that's that's one thing that kind of stood with me, and that's one thing I've tried all the time. And um, you know, the, this entire chalta hai attitude, you know, uh, is something that uh, I always try to say, uh, you know, not to do it uh, ever. And if, if I think of uh, uh, like Rafael Nadal, uh, you know, uh, if you think him, if you see him playing, he pays for every point. He pays to win every point. Uh, it's not about, hey, I'll win the tournament somehow. You know, it, it's about every point's got to be made. And in that sense, I think that element of perfection, striving for perfection in everything you do, I think is important. I think small things matter. Um, you know, aim for the stars. You know, you, you may not get them, but you won't end up with a handful of dust either. So these are some of the elements that I think uh, I've kept in mind as I have uh, I have uh, shaped through my my career. When the rate of change outside is greater, is greater than the rate of change inside, you know, then it's uh, it's the beginning of the end. And uh, in that in that sense, you know, just like the company S curves, I've always aspired to have my own S. Uh, I've aspired to have my own S curves. And in that sense, 
uh, it's really about uh, seeing how can I challenge myself uh, working across different industries, working uh, you know, across different sectors uh, with different leaders, uh, with different teams. And uh, I think that's how you know one one gets stronger. And I'm very excited to be like currently where I am at Lead. Um, you know where we're looking at uh, really uh, transforming school school tech in India. Phenomenal. Thank you so much, Rohit. There's so much that you shared, and I love the anecdote that you shared. So two things clearly uh, stemming out of that. One is the team spirit, uh, moving along with the team, and the second is really the dynamic environment and ecosystem uh, that you are creating as you are. And clearly that reflects in your choice of moving to edtech right now. Uh, so quite a dynamic environment that you've chosen for yourself uh, and fast pace and moving there. So on that note, like you said, you've been through different uh, industries and over your career, I'm sure as a leader, uh, you may have encountered some kinds of ebb flows in your, uh, your, your career, I'm sure. And uh, there may be a lot of stories to tell, but if you were to share any one or two distinctly that chiseled you to be the leader that you are today or the way that you overcame those challenges and essentially what was the impact of that? I think... Um... There's so many. I mean, I, I really think, I think challenges and failures are really the ones that uh, make a person stronger. Uh, you know, that's how you kind of learn different strokes. Is your own repertoire of, uh, of, of things that you've done. So I think there will be many, many challenges, stories of growth, of degrowth, of uh, restructuring and so on. But the one that I think I'll share today is, um, you know, one of the organizations I worked in, which was hit by a global crisis. We had uh, four different CEOs, uh, you know, in, in two years uh, of, of the company. Uh, we were a small dot, you know, you know, like it, you know, it was a multinational, so we were a small dot, you know, in the overall, you know, company's um, uh, landscape. Uh, we could have been shut down any time as well because, you know, you know, there were huge losses that the uh, company was going through because of the both the internal and the external crisis. And uh, we had to do pretty serious organization restructuring as well, uh, keep the morale high, and really, uh, you know, turn the company around. And I think. Uh, uh, that pretty much would be amongst the toughest uh, challenges of my career. I think I, a few, few elements uh, that if I think about how I went through it, uh, one of course, like, like I said, I, I think I had a great team you know, working with me. And one of the things that team and I committed to was that we will see through this crisis. Okay? We will not run away. Uh, you know, we could have quit ourselves and kind of gone or whatever. But uh, I, I think the core team you know, you know, stayed in HR, you know, stayed through the crisis. Um, I think excellent partnership with my peers as leaders, with every CEO who came and, and, and who had to leave for, 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 for their own reasons. Uh, the partnership had to be strong because you, know, you, you can't do this alone as an individual or as HR. The partnership with leadership has to be there. And I think in this crisis, working through with frontline managers you know, who really know the pulse of the business, the pulse of employees, the pulse uh, of the customer, they really help you uh, shape your strategy or execution strategy because um, it's not just about what you do, it's also about how you do it. And that calibration, you know, in a certain sense, comes very well when you're really connected with people in the field who take ownership, you know, for, 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 for making this happen as well. So I think that, that connectedness, again, was something that was, uh, was, was tremendously helpful. The fourth thing that I would say is uh, I, I can't emphasize the importance of communication. Uh, it is communicate, 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 uh, really, uh, because especially in a crisis or where teams are spread out, you know, or in this case, like, like in all over India, and there are newspaper articles coming out about what's happening in the global world, what's happening in India, they're seeing actions taking place in the company. For us, not to share with them, you know, uh, uh, is, and that's, and that's somebody else who's sharing it is not as strong, you know, as you are in terms of knowing what's happening. So in that sense, you know, that sharing becomes uh, extremely important, uh, you know, as well. So the importance of communication, again, you know, uh, I would say came through very, very strongly. If I think of the themes behind this uh, in terms of what helps to execute, the first is external focus. How do you grapple what's happening around you, not be insulated, you know, to, uh, to what's happening with, with you yourself and uh, get the external context in. That's, that's theme number one. Team number two is clear thinking. How do you rattle through the chase 
of all the stuff you know that you've been hit with and come to those few things that matter and communicate those few things again you know very very well uh the third is imagination and courage uh how can you be creative in these moments how can you have the courage to say what you think ought to be done how do you do things that ought to be done and then fourthly be inclusive that you work through many many people you know many many others and then see uh uh you know how how do you partner with people want to kind of really empathize engage and co-create you know stuff and lastly but not the least is your own expertise you've got to know your game you know, you've got to know your stuff and and that's when when you work with a it's, it's like an orchestra right when uh, you know each, each person somebody knows the guitar somebody knows the violin you know somebody knows the piano but they you know they need to know their stuff and then when you come together with these elements i think what you can uh what what you can then jam on or play on you know can be like really good music so so i guess these were the five themes that i would say uh, constituted uh, you know what we actually came up with so thank you so much rohit i think those were very sharp edged five pointers that you've shared so on that note i'm going to move on to the other part or the other aspect that hr really drives and it's becoming more important than ever in today's context it's really about driving reward and recognition systems uh offering benefits to employees you know so in your career i'm sure you would have seen some best practices uh, uh all along the way and if there are any that you want to call out uh, uh particularly which might be helpful and also maybe comment on how important and critical right now is it in the current scenario um maybe almost during the pandemic that we've been through Uh, I think the rewards and recognition schemes uh, need to leverage technology. Uh, yeah, I think in almost every employee engagement survey, uh, the desire to be recognized, uh, the desire to be re- rewarded for good work, uh, it, it comes up as an element where uh, where employees and organizations kind of you know uh, want to focus on. I think the good part is uh, that the technology platforms of today allow for visibility, gamification. and a community formation which then creates a certain excitement also about rewards and recognition and and gets the entire organization hooked on to it's visible to them and they also get hooked on for the attempt to kind of you know uh, you know get rewarded or or, you know, or get recognized uh, secondly i think it's important for these schemes as we deal with technology that they still ensure that they bring in the personal touch uh, wherever possible experiences individual teams uh and uh and an organization wide you know group experiences work better than just cash rewards uh finally in today's time the individual needs of the employees are in focus what this means is the benefits need to be flexible someone might require a high insurance coverage some someone might need a gym membership these benefits need to be made available in such a way that is administratively easy to provide them at the same time easy for employees to avail of them Uh, and and I think that's why the entire element of platforms you know where they you know where they can come into play and um, and all all these benefits might come from different providers so uh, but for an employee the experience you know should be seamless right thank you so much on that one uh, and i'd like to know what is that one hr trend that you're closely following and uh, you'd like to share with the audience and probably what is the source where you get uh, your your info from on the CHR trend I think uh, through my career I've been working now over 27 years and uh, I think uh, at GE at Microsoft at Accenture uh, uh, currently in my organization lead lead school I think uh, how organizations are shaping cultures and building leadership uh, is something that it struck me it, it struck me there's just the importance about organizational success being truly linked to the quality of leadership in the organization and the fact that culture eats strategy for breakfast lunch and dinner so uh reading about anything or following trends around anything that helps organization uh you know get stronger in these elements or learnings from uh, from organizational uh, uh, attempts at, at both uh, shaping leadership and shaping culture is a trend that i have been following i follow today and i think that even in the future this is one thing fundamental to any um, Uh, any successful uh, or a failing organization, whatever happens to organizational agility or whatever else. So I, I think that is one trend that uh, 
I've been exposed to, I, uh, I've learned a lot from and I continue uh, to learn around this. As a guiding light, what is that one advice that you'd like to give to HR professionals that's absolutely a must do? I, I think take risks with your career, you know, don't get in the comfort zone and definitely do not become a kind of ready to serve transaction specialist machine. Instead, elevate yourself to being a true business partner who looks around the corners, plays to your strengths, seeks out feedback and takes personal accountability for actions. They just get in the comfort zone, you know, they just, I mean, many people just do that uh, and they know the people around them, they know this thing, whatever, it's upset, eh? let me just continue doing it and, and they go, I mean, they all grow, they all do very well, but I'm just saying that, I, that's why I'm saying it's good to take some risks uh, with your career, I think it builds self-confidence, it, it just uh, gets you more uh, grounded uh, and, and more, uh, you know, strength from inside stuff, you know, waiting for what, what's happening around me. And I think it's a function of two things, a function of how the organization views HR uh, and secondly, how is an HR person uh, wanting to break out uh, and stick their neck out to say, uh, I think I can do things differently. Uh, and, and that's what my second part of the comment about don't become a ready to serve transaction specialist machine. Uh, because otherwise it's always about, hey, yes, sir, I will do this for you, sir, and I will do this fast, I'll do this as of yesterday, uh, you will not have to ask me again for this, and so I become an execution machine. Um, I think that's one important part, I think execution is definitely very important, but beyond that uh, is, is, is my element about becoming, a, what I spoke in my first element also, is to become a true strategic business partner, and for that you've got to show, you know, you've, you've, got, to, you've, got, to, you've got to show, take risks and uh, you may fail and then be ready, be ready to fail and uh, take the big bats for that but uh, I think more, more often than not you will succeed set the bar high on yourself and set the bar high on your team uh, in addition to the voice of the leader the voice of your peers and the voice of your own team never forget to listen and act to other voices around you uh, the voice of the employee and the voice of the customer uh, I mentioned earlier in my this thing what I call the roster test. Uh, take an employee roster for any day of your tenure with the company. Close your eyes, uh, tap on, a, on any employee name. Assess for yourself what will the net promoter score given by that employee to you uh, and to your team be and strive for an overall net, net positive uh, NPS. Fab and on that note, the final one, your sign of line. I think uh, stay grounded and stay curious. Uh, that would be my recommendation to you uh, in HR. When I say stay grounded, I think grounded is uh, implicit. Humility is implicit in that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I was first toying with the idea should I say stay humble and stay uh, curious? As in humble sounds like sounds too, uh, you know, too, too, too kind of you know big, whatever. I think grounded is in my mind combines humble, combines the learning mindset. Uh, combines knowing the reality of life. I think ground, we, we sometimes when as we go, we just, uh, our head is in the sky and you know, our feet I think should be on the ground. I think the concept of humility, as you mentioned, I think is critical. Uh, you know, that always allows the space that a leader needs to uh, most importantly listen, uh, instead of telling uh, and telling and telling. Uh, everybody wants your opinion, you know, as you grow in the organization, they want your opinion, they want a point of view, they want to take a decision and move on in life, uh, you know, that gives them easy speed, you know, to kind of move on. And I think, but as, I think as a leader, uh, the importance of being in HR, coaching is, is, is a thing and coaching is about you finding your own potential and you, uh, you know, making your own, own decisions. And I think that's why the element of humility uh, uh, comes in because it comes from an element that I don't have all the answers uh, very really uh, the answers have to come from those around me and yes I'm, I'm accountable for my actions eventually as a leader but uh, don't come to me for an immediate, immediate decision I want your element there I think uh, it could be interpreted sometimes as indecisiveness maybe uh, but I think over a period of time uh, humility is uh, the element of what I mentioned in the future of HR also of people belonging in the organization, uh, you know, uh, uh, maximizing the person's uh, mind, body, heart and soul, you know, to, so that I'm contributing to the company. I think all these elements will come in when a leader is, uh, is humble 
and the and, and the unity means accepting different opinions you know different perspectives listening and so on and uh, i think it's critical in, in the element of being grounded that's a great one and so thank you so much rohit for being uh, the guiding light today uh, on the guiding light series by zagal it's been an absolute pleasure interacting with you thank you so much Thank you.